of mathematics. Mathematics is everywhere. It is in the objects we create, in the works of art we admire. Although we may not notice it, mathematics is also present in the nature that surrounds us, in its landscapes and species of plants and animals, including the human species. Our attraction to other humans and even our mobility depend on it. But how does this happen? From the structure of buildings to the discovery of new planets, from trade to fashion and new technologies, mathematics has always served as an important tool in the advancement of science and technology in fields as diverse as engineering, biology, philosophy, and arts. And it is also present in nature, concealing and revealing its charms in various forms, intriguing researchers and inspiring poets. One of the ideas that best embodies mathematics in all its elegance is the concept of symmetry. The roof of the Lod Fala Mosque in Isfahan, Iran is a great example of symmetry endowed with beauty in architecture. Inside the mosque, there are several rooms with diverse symmetrical motifs. Harmony and beauty. An object is symmetrical when there is harmony in the proportions of its parts in the relation to the whole. Height, width, and length are balanced. Strictly associated with harmony and beauty, symmetry is also a decisive concept in theories about nature. Ancient Greece was apparently the first place where this idea had room to develop. The Stanford Dictionary of Philosophy remind us that Antimios, the work of Greek philosopher Plato, 429-347 BCA or before the Common Era. For example, regular geometric forms take center stage in the doctrine of natural elements because of the proportion they contain and the beauty of their forms. The four elements, fire, water, earth, and air, could be represented by regular geometric shapes with polyhedrons of 4, 20, 6, and 8 equal size respectively. The universe could also be represented by a 12-sided polyhedron or a symmetrical dodecahedron. When particles with these different forms are combined, they give rise to all the natural elements we know. Although the word or concept of symmetry did not exist in Greek vocabulary in the days of Plato, the concept was already developing. The Greek noun symmetria, which literally means of the same size, was already being used to refer to proportion. Some say that the size and proportion of perfect solids described by Plato are related to each other. The size of particles of fire, water, and air could be combined together because they are proportional. They were described as having a golden proportion among themselves, or a type of symmetry that marks the growth rate in the development of several species. The leaves of a tree, for example, multiply more or less at this speed after the sprout 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. The last number is always the sum of the two preceding numbers, and when we divide each number by its predecessor, the result will be very close to 1.6180, or what mathematicians like the Italian Leonardo Fibonacci, 1175-1250, consider as the golden proportion. When applied to a succession of proportion squares within a rectangle, this sequence of numbers always with a golden ratio between them generates a golden rectangle. In nature, this type of symmetry marks the growth rhythm in the development of the several species and is also perceptible to the naked eye, fitting into the rules that determine the conception of beauty in art. 
the greatest example of the materialization of the golden spiral in nature is perhaps the Nautilus, a prehistoric mollusk that still has living relatives in the Pacific Ocean. The Nautilus is a surviving species of the Archaic subclass of Nautiloids, which appeared at the beginning of Paleozoic, long before the dinosaurs and even before the appearance of the first terrestrial animals. The subclass of ammonoids included the extinct species of ammonites, still much appreciated by the fossils of fossilados, and also displayed the golden proportions of the results. We can see several other forms of symmetry in nature. There is a form of bilateral symmetry, like the reflection of an image in a lake that can be divided into two identical parts. And it can also be radial when the image forms around a central point and radiates to all sides such as an open flower or a yellow dandelion. Symmetry also manifests itself in complex forms such as fractals, in which a structure looks similar to the whole on any scale. Also, in the case of sounds and waves of the same frequency, we can say with certainty that sounds and lights are also symmetrical. In the natural world, symmetries are not completely perfect and harbor some visible imperfections. According to IME USP Professor Eduardo Colley, our eye looks for symmetries, even if these are not perfect in nature. In fact, the greatest beauty in the symmetries of nature lies in these little imperfections. Spheres, spheres. An object is spherically symmetrical if it can be cut into two equal halves, regardless of the direction of the cut, as long as it passes through its center. Fruits like oranges and some lemons have a shape that is very close to being spherical. Bilateral beauty. One of the main symmetries in nature is bilateral. We see how one side of the body of a plant or animal is a very close copy of the other, as if it were a plane, able to split the image into two sides, or two almost perfectly reflected images. Not infrequently, this morphology has a clear function. For example, it would be a very difficult for a bird to fly straight if its wings weren't the same size. For Plato, the sphere was the most symmetrical and homogeneous form that is existed, and therefore the most beautiful and perfect form of all. He said that the cosmos had a spherical shape, as well as the celestial bodies like the planet Jupiter we see in the image. UFRJ today, physicists believe that all cosmological constant is positive, which means that scales of university, the cosmos really could be a sphere. It would be a fourth dimensional space time sphere. But even so, it means that Pluto was not that wrong at all. A body is radically symmetrical if you can cut it several times and generate equal pieces, or if it is impossible to rotate it around a central axis and get a circle effect. The main difference compared to spherical shapes is that in the case of spheres, there is no up or down side as in a more or less flat plane. In ready form, this size exist. Take this conifer pine, for example, viewed from above, it has radial symmetry. When seen from the side, it has more or less spherical symmetry. A mixture of symmetries. There are shapes or species that combine more than one type of symmetry by radial species. For example, Combine radial and bilateral symmetries. These are not very common in nature, and perhaps one of the best representatives of this type of format are the calm jellies, resembling jellyfish. These marine animals have symmetrical opposite sides, but each side is different from its adjacent one. What does that mean? If it were a geometric figure, a calm jelly could easily be represented by a rectangle. The top and bottom sides are the same. However, these refer from the right and left sides, or which are also the same. If all sides were exactly the same, the figure would no longer be a rectangle, but a square. 
The morphology of comb jellies is not easily explained, but they are beautiful to observe. Their translucent glow changes all the time. The images in the video were filmed at the Shed Aquarium in Chicago, USA. Fractal a term coined by the French mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot in the mid-1970s comes from the Latin word fractals or broken. This explains the logic of fractals geometry. It is a structure with a symmetrical scale. Any part of the fractal, no matter how small, has the same shape as the whole picture. A good example is a QBC, better known as a Menger sponge. The figure is the name in honor of Austria, mathematician Karl Menger who is the last century studied the topology of geometric objects. He can create a Menger sponge by removing the central part of a cube and repeating the process a few times on the increasingly smaller scale. Probably the best representation of fractal forms in nature is the Roman cauliflower. Symmetries in another dimension Not all the symmetries we know happen in the spatial dimension in the form of geometric figures and forms found in nature. Symmetries also exist in the natural world in another ways that we can see, hear, and feel. Light and sound, for example, behave as a wave and we can say that these are symmetrical when their wavelength is regular. Its symmetry does not occur in space the way a geometrical figure visibly does its pulsation, light, and sound are symmetrical in time. Some stars, for example, have regular variations in brightness or pulsations. R.S. Pupis, located near the center of a Milky Way, is one of these. Its frequency of pulsation is approximately 40 days. In this video of the American, NASA, and European ESA Space Agency, we see a kind of time lapse of the pulsation of R.S. Pupis. Symmetries are everywhere all the time. Just look around to see that they surround us. In addition to endowing our daily life with more grace and beauty, they also have many functions of which we are unaware. Nature hides numbers, equations, and proportions that can be unraveled by anyone who is curious enough. As the celebrated physicist Richard Feynman once said, knowledge of science only enriches the excitement mystery and admiration for nature. It does not take away its beauty.